So my name is Dr. Alex Rovner. I'm a practicing cardiologist at Metro Health Medical Center, and I will be discussing a normal Frank Starling curve. So let me draw you a representative, and we're going to have uh, x-axis as, uh, as volume, and the y-axis could be um, any indication of a cardiac output or stroke volume. Most of the uh, patients that, uh, that we see that are in normal heart function would have their volume status somewhere on this part of the Starling curve with corresponding volumes being on the x-axis and in the normal uh, range implying that they shouldn't be volume overloaded, they shouldn't have swelling of their legs or pulmonary edema. And then if you look at the y-axis, the normal range of the stroke volume or cardiac output would be corresponding to these points that, that I indicated on the Frank Starling curve. As the volume status increases, the cardiac myocytes get stretched. And obviously, you can see it from going from this point to this point. As the volume status goes up on the x-axis, the cardiac index or cardiac output is going to go up on the y-axis. This is true only when you are on the or steep slope of the curve, which is uh, what I'm drawing you here. Once you get to the point where the slope becomes flattened out, increase in volume is not going to change the cardiac output or stroke volume much. So I can demonstrate it going from this point to this point. Obviously, the volume went up, but if you look at the y-axis, there's really not much of a change in cardiac output or in the stroke volume. And therefore, what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep our, uh, our patients on this portion of the Starling curve so that the increase in volume would translocate into true increase in uh, cardiac output or stroke volume.